after organizing a rally supporting police, well, my next guest, Scott Lebedo, painted a tribute outside an NYPD precinct. No nasty messages, no curse words, no derogatory pictures, just a simple blue line to signify that police lives matter. Now, literally minutes after he finished, a BLM protester vandalized it. I find this very offensive. I feel like it's making it blue lives versus black lives or white lives versus black lives. It's not that. Black lives matter doesn't mean that all lives don't matter. It means that black lives are in danger right now. And we don't need to be making a sign, a sign here. And joining me now is the man who painted that blue line, Scott Levido. Um, Scott, that protester also says she did it because she loves her country, but it turns out, it seems like certain messages are accepted and other messages have to be erased. Laura, when I was 20 years old, I was chasing girls and drinking beer with my buddies in the park. I didn't know anything about life. This is the problem. These young white socialist anarchists, everybody got a trophy, kids, they think they know everything about the world. That blue line I painted had nothing to do with blue, uh, Black Lives Matter. It wasn't anti-Black Lives Matter. It wasn't a dividing thing. It was just a simple blue line supporting the most demoralized police in the world. It is disgusting what has happened. So I just put this simple blue line. Now, I don't know if you know, I got a letter from the city. The cease and the cease and desist letter for me to remove that blue line. And I responded to the city with the letter and I said, this letter ain't worth the paper it's printed on. You know where you can put this. Because did the mayor get a letter from the DOT for putting his artwork on the street without a permit yeah. that we just found out? No, he didn't. What about the thousands of other people who desecrated all of these public buildings and that are on film with graffiti? Did any of them get a letter? No, they didn't, Laura. You know why I got a letter, Laura? Because I'm a conservative-leading artist in a very liberal city, and I support the men and women in blue. That's discrimination. So, well, the, the attacks, uh, Scott, on police are way up nationally. Um, assaults on police, uh, whether they're being hit with glass bottles or worse, um, obviously disrespected, it doesn't even begin to describe how they're treated. These are good men and women. I mean, no one's perfect. Everybody, you know, every police department, I'm sure, has an occasional bad apple and sometimes do criminal things. We all know that. Every group has its problem. But what happens yes. when you paint a blue line, you're cited with violating an ordinance that Bill de Blasio himself violated by overseeing the construction of a large Black Lives Matter street mural. Um, but I guess there are rules for thee, but not for me. And it's the old do as I say, not as I do. Listen, this is, the, this is that mentality. I am a conservative artist. The artwork threw me under the bus, Laura, so long ago. And I, my artwork is for the people. I'm not this hoity-toity artist. I'm from Staten Island. I don't pronounce my R's properly. They don't like that. I vote Republican. I'm a NASCAR fan. I love my country. I love my military and the men and women in the world. And that's what I do with my artwork. My artwork is for those people. And the art world and these elitists, these liberal elitists, hate that, Laura. They hate it. And I love every second of it. I that love it. Now, President Trump, Scott, was uh, actually asked about your tribute being defaced by BLM, and this is what he said. They can do whatever they want. You do one blue line, mm -hmm. and they make it like it's a mortal sin. Do you ever think you'd see that? And this has been happening now for a long time. Scott, how did that make you feel? It got all the way to the president. Um, so also, I'm not like because I'm a very outspoken Trump supporter, as you can see some of my I artwork. Couldn't, I here. couldn't tell. You know, <laughs> um, it, it gave me goosebumps. It really did. You know, for him to not only discuss, you know, what my artwork, what I did, but the, the whole concept, you know, I, and I hate to say this, but you guys have been talking about it a little bit. I think the Black Lives Matter movement, all right, they have their, they have a movement. They have a legitimate movement. But I think they should be in, in, in they should be so upset that it's been hijacked by these young radical socialists who don't give two bleeps about that movement. They are in there to inject their own agenda. Okay, and this has been happening. Laura, I don't know how long you know me, but I 
been fighting political correctness since the 90s when it reared its ugly head, using my artwork to warn people that this day would come. And here we are. And who is it? It's these young college well, age the product, brainwashed. Yeah. Scott, they're the product of an educational system and a culture that frankly was intended to by parents, by the, the church, by uh, adults across the board, businesses, they just kind of looked the other way and made money doing business in China. And now <laughs> look at what we have at the other end of it. Scott, we're going to be following this story. Um, and thank you for speaking out. Anyone from Staten Island, by the way, it's a friend of mine. <laughs> Maybe you got to run for mayor. Uh, Scott, thanks so much.